Hey, welcome back, everybody. This is uh, Science is Cool, a virtual unconference for a cool teacher. And I'm Dave from Pocket Lab, uh, your host today. And uh, we're in the afternoon session now. And, and we're really glad to have uh, Alexis. Let me introduce Alexis from SciShow. She is the content manager for SciShow. And if you've never heard of SciShow, uh, you need to go to YouTube and just uh, type in SciShow, and you'll see it's an amazing channel. And uh, uh, she's here to tell you about uh, what they do and about their resources for students. So Alexis, um, <laughs> so glad to have you. It's fantastic. Um, Thanks so, so much. Yeah, you bet, you bet. And you're from the Midwest, right? I am, I'm based in Michigan. Okay, great. And you've been at SciShow, how long were you at SciShow? Uh, three years of staff, and then I was a freelancer for a year before that. So okay. four years now. Great. Well, thank you for coming, and uh, I will meet you back here in about twenty minutes. For uh, I'll be watching for Q and A, and I'm going to be off. I'm going to be off building my rocket here. While you... <laughs> <laughs> if you don't see me, somebody should chop me up because I'll be busy gluing stuff and whatever. <laughs> Perfect. Well, good luck with the rocket. <laughs> I'll see you at one twenty. Thanks a lot, Alexis. Sounds great. Thanks for the great introduction, Dave. Uh, that was super kind of you. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, taking half an hour to hang out here and hear a little bit more about SciShow and SciShow Kids. Um, like Dave mentioned, I'm Alexis Dahl. I'm the content manager for the shows. Um, I will, so I'm not going to talk too much about uh, what I call like the main SciShow channel or what we call SciShow Prime internally, um, the one that's just at youtube.com slash SciShow, uh, S-C-I-S-H-O-W. Um, that was our first show and it's amazing. I love it. We're uploading videos there seven days a week, um, just kind of exploring the, the curious counterintuitive stuff about the world. Um, and the, the age range for that show, it's really kind of high school and above. Um, just for anyone who loves learning, whether they're a student or not. Um, it's the thing that got me into science communication professionally. Um, so I love it. It has a special place in my heart. But yeah, what I'm super excited to share with you about um, is a new project that we relaunched in 2020, uh, which is SciShow Kids. Um, so SciShow Kids, it's free, it's easy to find. And I just kind of want to, in the next 20-ish minutes, Kind of like peel back the curtain and show you some of the things that are going through our heads some of the um, kind of secret insider information that we're thinking about as we make this show so before i get too ahead of myself i actually want to introduce you to two more people i'm gonna go ahead and share my screen real, real quick um let's see yeah introduce you to two people who are in the chat um if i can get come along zoom there you go. Cool. Yes, yeah, so I've got two people in the chat here with me that I want to introduce you to. Um, yep, so there's me again, uh, content manager for SciShow. But also in the chat, we've got Caitlin Hoffmeister. She is our senior producer. And we've also got Sam Schultz, who's our producer and who works on SciShow Kids specifically. Um, and if you happen to be familiar with the show already, uh, Sam is also the voice of Sam the Bat. So Sam the Bat's in the chat. Um, yeah, so they'll be around. Feel free to shoot any questions their way. And if not, we'll uh, catch up more during the Q&A part of this. So yeah, over the next 20 minutes, just going to give you some insider info, share what's next. Um, I want to share a little bit about uh, using YouTube in the classroom, which can sometimes feel like a risky thing, as I'm sure you all have some experience with. Um, and then also just share a tiny bit about what else our production company does. Uh, so SciShow is part of the Complexly family of channels and we make educational content for just about every topic. Um, so wrap up with a little bit of that. But yeah, just to dive in, um, so some big overview key information about SciShow Kids. Uh, first of all, you can find us at youtube.com slash SciShow Kids. Uh, it's pretty easy to remember. You can also just search for SciShow Kids in the um, YouTube search bar and it'll pop up there too. Uh, yeah. So the other key info, it's targeted at second grade. Um, we do try to make sure that the content is friendly for audiences a little bit younger than that. So first grade kindergarten should generally be fine, but really the, the tone and the science lessons here are um, aimed at second graders. So I won't talk a ton about what the show is actually like. It's pretty straightforward and uh, pretty easy to see for yourself if you wanna poke around on the page while I'm chatting. 
Um, but yeah, you can see it's pretty bright, it's colorful, it follows this cast of characters in their super secret science hideout, the fort, um, as they're just learning and exploring more about the world. So by way of introduction, I'm just going to hop over to the actual YouTube Kids page. And I'll just play a few seconds of one of our recent videos just to give you a sense of kind of the, the tone and the vibe we've got going on here. Um, so this is what you'll find, youtube.com slash scishowkids. Uh, got our videos page. You'll notice there's a whole ton of content here. I'll let you peruse that. Um, we have more than 400 videos at this point going back to 2015. Um, we took a brief hiatus starting late 2018. So after a year and a half, we're, uh, we're back making new stuff. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you all the beginning of the solar powered slugs video, which is super, it's super cute and lovely. Um, quick heads up, if you've not experienced this yet today, uh, Zoom is notoriously unreliable with browser audio. So I'm gonna try really hard not to break anyone's eardrums, but especially if you've got headphones on, uh, I would consider putting your finger over the volume button. So yeah, I'll just play about 30 seconds for you and uh, then we'll tell you how the heck we're making this thing because it, it's a fun time. <laughs> This spinach we picked from our garden looks so yummy. It's gonna be great in our salad later. Hey Squeaks, have you ever wondered why we need to eat food like salad to fuel our bodies, but we never see plants eat? Well, that's because plants can use sunlight to make food inside them. And they do it by using green leaves like this, right? But do you wanna know what's even cooler than that? There's an animal that can last a whole year without eating anything because it also has this superpower. It can make food inside its body with light too. The ant All right, I'm gonna go ahead and mute that there and then pick a, a more friendly screenshot of Jessie so she's not awkwardly frozen. <laughs> uh, I'll just hop back over here. Yeah, so if you wanna learn more about that uh, super powered, solar powered slug, I will let you learn that on your own time. Um, yeah, but that's just a, a preview of kind of what the show looks like. Uh, it usually starts with some kind of question. Um, the host is going to, to investigate something. Maybe there's a conflict that they wanna use science to talk through. Um, it's really just, it's just a good time. So our main hosts here, you've got Jesse, who you saw in that clip, um, who's played by Jesse Knutson Castaneda. Uh, you've got uh, Mr. Brown, who's a new character in 2020, played by Anthony Brown. Uh, I love Anthony, he's a delight. You've got Squeaks, the robot lab rat. Um, and then throughout the episodes, you've got this recurring cast of other characters that pops up, including Sam the Bat. So, all right, I will hop out of there. Um, yeah, but what y'all will notice is just, it's it's just fun. It's bright, it's cheerful. Um, there's, uh, the hosts are pretty high energy, but there's something that's really important to us as we're making the show, um, and that it's not SciShow Kids also isn't fluff. Like, it's, it's fun. We really hope it's entertaining. We really hope that anyone who watches it has a good time, but it's um, designed to have some substance to it too. So there are a couple of ways we try to bring that depth to the show. And uh, yes, the first one, um, so this, I'm a professional science communicator and have been doing this um, as long as I've been out of school. So this one kind of cracks me up. For the show, again, target age is second grade. The, the science is relatively simple. Um, but we're sourcing all these episodes as much as possible from peer-reviewed scientific journals, um, just to really make sure we're getting it right and we're having an independent fact checker review everything. Um, just, yeah, because a, a big part of um, you putting trust in the show is just that it's gonna be accurate and that you don't have to worry about that. Uh, the other thing, which is new in 2020, I am thrilled about this. This is one of my favorite things about the relaunch of uh, SciShow Kids is that we are working with an educational consultant to make the show. Um, so her name is Jenna Mead. She is my hero of the year. Um, she's an elementary ed specialist and specializes in supplemental learning. And she is really with us from the pitch stage all the way to the final script right before Jesse and Anthony get it. Um, just really making sure it's clear, the, the context is there, it's age appropriate, and also um, the big thing for us, the, the big new thing for us is everything on SciShow Kids or all of the new content rather, it's all aligned with the next generation science standards. So our hope there 
was just kind of structuring our content around NGSS is to make it as useful as possible, that it'll just like really slot into lesson plans. It'll be easy for classroom learning, for at-home learning. And Jenna is helping us make sure that we get that right. So I'm going to show you a couple of uh, little pieces of insider information, things if you're scrolling through the thumbnails right now, things you might not immediately notice, but that we're being pretty intentional about with the show this time around. Um, so the first, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen one more time. I'm not going to play a video though, so we sh I should uh, be fine audio wise. Oh, got a question. Uh, I am not related. Man, how, how do I not know how to pronounce Dahl's last name, the author of uh, Willy Wonka on the Chocolate Factory. I am not related to him. Um, I stole my husband's last name, but he's not related to him, him either. Uh, that, was, that was a fun question though. Thank you. Um, okay, and I'm getting ahead of myself. Here we go. So yeah, some kind of uh, insider, insider info. Um, if you're scrolling through the thumbnails here, you'll notice if you go back to older content, it's um, really super varied. None of the episodes really directly relate to each other other than it's the same kind of format and cast of characters. You've got singing next to raisins by fire and frost. But if you look at the new content, we're yeah, making stuff in what we're calling NGSS arcs. So four to six episode arcs all related to um, the same kind of group of science standards from NGSS. So if you've got, um, got these four videos here, are about, all about the sun. We've got these episodes from George Washington Carver to phytoplankton to dung beetles to how living things work together, all pulled from the like life sciences and ecology section of those second grade standards. Um, again, this is why I mentioned it's totally friendly for first grade and kindergarten, but we say it's targeted at second grade because that's really, um, those are really the standards we're drawing on to make this. Uh, just to, to clarify, um, all of these episodes do work totally fine as standalone content. You don't have to watch any others to understand what you're going to click on. But yeah, now the, the channel has a little bit more of a sense of cohesion, um, especially if you're planning for broader lessons, you can, you can draw from a variety of episodes. Um, so that's, that's the first thing we've been working with Jenna on. The second thing we're really thinking about this year that, oh, I love this so much. Um, this is one of my favorite things we're, we're doing with the show now is we're trying to tell stories about scientists that kids might not hear about in traditional lesson plans um, or scientists that might get overlooked or just ones that they haven't heard about. So on the page here, you've got this episode about uh, Dr. Cecilia Payne Gaposchkin, who taught us what the sun was made of at a time where um, people didn't think women could be astrophysicists. Uh, you've got this episode on George Washington Carver, where um, it's about a crop rotation, Squeaks is having trouble with his plants. Um, but it also, we had this conversation internally of like, how do you talk about slavery to second graders? Um, we ended up working with an additional consultant to make this episode and just about um, his experiences and just how to communicate that in a way that was appropriate and just told, told this great story. So those are kind of two inside things that you can look out for as we keep posting more content here. Um, and again, if you want to be notified every time we upload something, uh, when you subscribe to the channel, you can hit the notification button, which will notify you every time we upload. Um, and also honestly subscribing, yeah, it is, it is a wonderful way to support the channel if you're up for it. Um, yeah, so those are the big things. Now I'm gonna stop my screen um, and hop back here. So you'll notice a couple of times I talked about um, uh, in 2020, we're doing this, or we we took this hiatus and then came back. Um, and we we did, yeah, we took this year and a half long break at the end of 2018 um, before uh, for, for a few reasons. And one of them was just YouTube wasn't a perfect place for kids content, um, which you, you might be familiar with. Um, yeah, yeah, it wasn't a perfect place for kids content. And we wanted to make sure that if teachers were gonna use our stuff and parents were gonna use it that they could you know, just trust the platform it was on to. Um, so I won't go too much into YouTube politics. That's, uh, I'm gonna call that outside the scope of this talk. <laughs> um, but I did wanna share a little bit. YouTube has made some changes in the last couple of years that I think are um, really helpful. And I also wanted to share a bit about some ways that you can use, use YouTube in the classroom. So the big thing for YouTube They've, in the last couple of years, really restructured how they've done kids' content. 
they've redone the way they present it to be in line with COPPA um, or the Children's Online Privacy and Protection Act. So it means a few things, but the key thing there is that they can't collect data on the user um, because they can't collect data under uh, can't collect data on people under 18. So that means on kids content, you will, if you get an ad at all, um, it should only be, you know, G rated, all family friendly. Also, there's not a comment section anymore and the um, related videos are all, uh, should be kid approved. But um, so really wonderful way to access this content in the classroom is actually through YouTube Kids. So uh, if you head over, so if you have access to it through your district, if you go to youtubekids.com, I'm um, gonna head back here one more time. So if you go to youtubekids.com, you will end up with this really lovely interface. It's super cute. You can find SciShow Kids. Um, you'll find all of our videos here. You'll find our channel. There are no ads on this. So it's a great way to just kind of not have to worry about that. Um, and it does take a little bit to get all of our content just as a heads up, but most of it is there. The other thing you can do, um, Sam put together a couple of really lovely resources here. So YouTube Kids, you've also got Google Classroom, Edpuzzle, Video.link, and SafeShare are all great ways to access YouTube content. Um, so if you need any of these, Sam and Caitlin know what's on the slide. So if they're, uh, feel free to ask them for it in the chat and they can refresh you on any of these. Um, yeah, yeah, so really our hope this year is that SciShow Kids will find its way to more teachers in more classrooms, to more families if they're doing at-home learning. So we would love it if you would be willing to, to share this, um, whether that means subscribing, sending it to people you think would be useful, using it in your own classroom. Um, yeah, we would love to see this really make its way out into the world. And with the last couple of minutes, um, if second grade isn't your, your particular jam, um, I did want to share a tiny bit about some of the other shows Complexly makes. So SciShow and SciShow Kids are part of the Complexly family of channels. It's a production company started by Hank and John Green. Um, if you're not familiar with them, there are a couple of just genuinely excellent, uh, how do you describe them? Authors and internet people. They're lovely. They're great at education. Um, so we've got all of our SciShow shows here. We've got Crash Course, which is uh, for high school curriculums, truly like any subject you can think of probably has a Crash Course at this point. And then um, going with the elementary theme, we've also got Crash Course Kids, which that is also NGSS aligned, and that is fifth grade science in particular. So yeah, you can find all of that stuff over at complexly.com or just search for any of these shows over on YouTube. Um, yeah, all right. I, I feel like I could talk about SciShow Kids for the next hour. Like I mentioned, it is, it is really close to my heart, but yeah, that's, that's the bulk of it. Um, I hope this gave you a little bit more insight into how we're making this thing and what we're thinking about. Um, yeah, and Dave, welcome back. How's your rocket? <laughs> <laughs> it's doing pretty good. I'm not ready to show it off yet. <laughs> Alexis, that was great. Thanks so much. It's great to see you behind the scenes. I, you know, I think, you know, who gets to really meet the content creators behind a, a YouTube channel? And you, you guys have a very successful channel. Oh, well, thank you. We're doing our best. <laughs> well, I mean, the production, I, I, we, we've used it for years. We've always looked at it and, and said, well, this is great content. The production value is really, really high. You, you know, it's clear you put a lot of work into these. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and I, um, my, my domain is really the scripting side. So I just want to give a huge hats off to Caitlin and Sam, um, and also Bill and Amy, who are some of our video makers who just make the show look as good as it does. Yeah, yeah, it is. And it, it, yeah, it is beautifully done and everything too. How big is the, the team, the SciShow team? Yeah, the SciShow kids, kids team in particular is pretty small. Um, we've got, uh, let's see, maybe seven of us at most. Um, the full SciShow team is a bit larger. Um, how many do we have? I'm gonna guess 20 and that's not terribly far off base, I don't think. Oh, thank you, Caitlin. It's about 15. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a big team. I mean, producing the content, that's great. There's some great questions here. So you yeah. know, uh, obviously the first one that always comes up for these is languages and international. Mm -hmm. now, obviously YouTube, you can get in most countries, you can access the content. Um, so what can people do if they want to have subtitles in a different language? Yeah, that is a great question. Um, YouTube 
just changed the way they did that. Um, yeah, Caitlin or Sam, if you're on the mic, do you any, do you happen to know if there are community captions in other languages now? What did YouTube do to that? <laughs> um, and if you're not on mic, that's also no problem. Caitlin, yeah, I can hop in and talk about that a little bit. Um, can you hear me? Can hear you. Yeah, so okay. Um, apologies, I don't know how to turn my camera on. It's being <laughs> weird. Um, but yeah, we used to work with volunteers and people in the audience could submit translated captions and YouTube did just do away with that. And right now I think what they use is Google Translate. Mm. And um, so we, so sometimes on YouTube videos, you'll see the automatic captions, closed captioning added. And it's just like the machine is listening and trying to figure it out. We always make sure to put in our actual script and adjust it to any pauses and changes and time it out just like that. And then that's what's translated. Um, oh, and actually Arturo Mendez is giving us a better answer. Um, oh yeah, it is just automatic translation right now because they're still figuring that out. So our hope is that they'll create something better in the future. Um, and that we're kind of researching how to do that on our end right now. Um, Crash Course is really taking the lead mm -hmm. on that. And you'll probably see um, Crash Course videos in um, localized languages before SciShow and then we'll follow suit. Um, so th they're leading that course right now. I, I would imagine that on the YouTube channel, there's like an info at Complexly or SciShow Dot com or something where people could reach out to you with with requests like that. Yeah, yeah. Our email address um, for our general inbox is just info at uh, scishow.com should go straight to us. Okay, Caitlin, thanks for typing that in. That's great. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned you do NGSS alignment, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. So is there you, you must have notes below the videos. There's like a mm -hmm. there's there's notes in the um, that probably does it talk to what um, specific lessons each specific lesson. Yeah, it does. Thanks for asking about that. Um, yeah, we're including in the description of every video what the specific standard is. So that should be pretty easy to find. Oh, that's fantastic. That would be. I wonder. I imagine you could probably search the search function on YouTube. Might help you find that. If you're like yeah. in the channel and search. Yeah, I would think so. Um, I know description is a big thing that the, the search engine crawls. So yeah, yeah. The um the other question, you know, by the way, this is a question I was we got we get all all the time. And I was it's on one of the lists I wanted to bring up with Neil. We just never get around to it. It's, you get like three questions. Sure. <laughs> That's about it. He talks, he, he loves to talk about, you know, these elaborate, interesting answers, right? Mm -hmm. But so young girls in STEM, I mean, is, is something that is so important. And it seems like your channel is really well tailored for that and a, like a good fit for that. Yeah, yeah, thanks for, for mentioning that. Um, yeah, our hope just whether it's the, the hosts on screen or the scientists we're talking about um, is really just highlighting the, the diversity of people in science. Um, yeah, there's there's a seat at the table for if you want to be a scientist there's a seat at the table for you um regardless of what sort of background you're coming from um yeah so we're really really sort of intentional with that from the hosts to the the graphics you see on screen too yeah yeah it seems like it's 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 very friendly for for young girls which is which is great um let's see i'm i'm sorry the chat's going by pretty fast here it's kind of hard to catch up on it. So you, you're in the Midwest. The studio is, where's your studio, studio located? Yeah, our studio is in uh, Missoula, Montana, which is currently under some snow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I heard there's a the big snowstorm going on. I, um, okay. Let me see. I'm trying to, wow. Okay. Sorry, I'm a little bit lost in the, in the chat here. No, no problem. It's not a I, bad I, problem I, to have. Thanks, everyone. Caitlin and Sam, you've been, um, um, answering questions really well. So what is the, the so the SciShow Kids is early K-5. Mm -hmm. Yep. There's a bit of a gap and then your regular channel is more used for, for high school. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right. And then, but you know, for a teacher, so do teachers use these, do they assign them out or do they use it in a classroom? Because if you're in a classroom, mm -hmm. 
um, it's, you don't necessarily, if the teacher is playing a video for the class, you don't necessarily have the child privacy issue in that case. The, the teacher is using their maybe Google Classroom account or mm -hmm. something, right? Yeah, yeah. How often, um, how we've often seen these videos, videos used in classrooms, um, I've also seen them with, with homeschool used a lot, especially this year, is it might be kind of here's like an introduction to a topic and then the teacher will kind of take over from there. Um, or it might be like, cool, we've already talked a little bit about this. Let's go, you know, deeper with Jesse and Squeaks. Um, yeah, so I think oftentimes, depending on exactly how you're using it and what setup you've got, the, the privacy, the, the weird ads um, aren't too bad. But yeah, we want to make sure that's, um, that that's not a concern for people using our content too. Yeah, yeah. One of the teacher has control over it. They can, you know, mm -hmm. they can manage that too. Is there, so what kind of range of subjects do you, do you, do you have like a leaning to certain subjects or you try to cover everything you can? Yeah, we try to do a little bit of everything. Um, so we have the, uh, we have a pretty, our editorial team has a pretty wide range of uh, specialties. So for kids in particular, the, um, couple of people helping really spearhead content. We've got a uh, PhD in, you know, biology. She's an ocean science specialist. She's phenomenal in animals and biology. Christy's wonderful. Um, my background is a weird mix of psychology and also space. Um, so yeah, we try to make sure there's a little bit of everything on the show. Um, some topics are easier than others just because of the way NGSS stuff is laid out. But yeah, we try to make sure it's not just like the weird animal channel. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. That's that's interesting. I saw uh, what what what's your interest in space? I saw that in your bio, and when I read it, I saw oh, you're from the from the Midwest, and you like space. You just I thought you don't like people. <laughs> that's no, not the case though, right? <laughs> no, no. My part of Michigan is pretty well populated. It's not too bad. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, I just happened to be a kid who grew up with an interest in space and I've just carried that into my work life. That's cool. That's a lot of fun. Well, you need a, you know, we'll get you an SD's rocket actually, if you want. I got we have a dozen of us, send you one. Let's, uh, let's talk after this. <laughs> <laughs> and you have NGSS consultants. I'm seeing this in the chat. That's really, mm -hmm. that's really key. Yeah. That's yeah. Jenna's lovely. She's taught us so much. Yeah. Alexis, this is great. I really appreciate it. And I have to, Caitlin, thanks so much. We can't see you. And Sam the bat, can we hear, <laughs> hear the bat voice just before we go? Or are you, you're, you're muted away? Hello, <laughs> this is the bat voice. <laughs> it's just your do, normal voice. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I can't do any different voices, so. Okay, so just you. pretend I'm a purple bat right now and you'll get the, the picture. Yeah, you need a little purple bat icon for you to zoom away oh, screen. Uh, I have a purple bat icon for everything except for Zoom, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Um, let me, see, I don't know, Mike, squeeze another one here. Thank you for all the free resources. This is great. The teachers are really loving this. This is great. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, oh, thank you. much contact with the planning of SciShow Tangents. What oh. are SciShow Tangents? Yeah, SciShow Tangents is our podcast. Um, Sam is one of the co-hosts, so we are very well connected with SciShow Tangents. Okay. Um, yeah, that's uh, it's a handful of people who've made SciShow happen over the years. It's we've uh, we refer to it as what like a, a lightly competitive knowledge showcase. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sam, did you want to say more about that? Oh, that that's mostly just like the the subjects we talk about on SciShow Tangents are all researched by the hosts of it. So we don't um, work with the writers too much on that. We we do like our own fact checking and stuff. But since that is more of like a science entertainment podcast, there uh, it's it's a little bit different of a process. So Alexis is not part of that, but but Caitlin and I both are the co-producers of it uh, not not for kids i'm saying I, so i have no, I no. All this when i start i didn't have time to go and listen to it i saw it um so it's so it's for adults to to have fun and and yeah, Teen, yeah. i think teens can listen to it probably too i wouldn't play it in a classroom but uh it's not like dirty or anything sometimes <laughs> okay. we'll just swear so do some light swearing okay got it <laughs> Uh, Alexis, Sam, Caitlin, thank you so much. It's such a pleasure having you. 
Um, I think everybody in, in the chat knows where the links are. Please subscribe to their channel. It's fantastic. It's, it's, uh, it is really great quality content. Mm -hmm.